What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back. Talking Mets at Rob. How's everybody doing? Before I get started about talking about Sandy Alderson and the Sandy Alderson problem, if you enjoy this video, guys, please hit on that like button. If you're enjoying my content, want to get notified when I post my videos and when I go live, guys, hit on that subscribe button, guys. All right? Make sure you hit on that subscribe button. So you get all the notification, guys, on my videos when I post them and when I go live. All right. So the Sandy Alderson problem. Now, I've spoke about this many times throughout a lot of my videos in the past regarding certain free agents, about Real Muto, about Springer, and what Sandy Alderson does and how he focuses on certain things and certain players and never ends up going into a, either a bid in war or he has a number in mind and then he doesn't go past that. And it seems like he never does. Now, I'm, now this is not, I want to make this perfectly clear. This is not about Sandy Alderson and his trades. When it comes to trades with Sandy Alderson, he has a really good track record of that. We can go back all the way to R.A. Dickey trade, to Toronto for Syndergaard and Travis Darno. We can go back to Beltran with Zach Wheeler. We can go back to Cespedes. And then re as recently as this, as in 2020 or 2021, with the Francisco Lind Lindor trade and Carlos Carrasco. Now, there's something about Sandy when it comes to trades that he just gets. And this is not the issue that I have with Sandy Olsen. The issue that I have with Sandy Olsen is free agency. It always seems like he has a number. This is what he thinks. And he is not ultimately upset if he misses out on the top player on the market. But Sandy Olsen is a plan B guy. It never seems like he wants to go 100% after a plan, a plan A, he never does that. And then a lot of people that watch this video might say, come on, Rob, really? Like, we're really going to get on Sandy Alderson? Yes, because there's certain things, and specifically this year, where the Mets had needs. No doubt about it. Now, they didn't go the extra $25 million for Springer where we need a center fielder. We didn't do that. We, we rather, we went to plan. It wasn't even plan B because plan B was Jackie Bradley Jr. We went to plan C in Alvin Amora Jr. When it comes to catcher, Sandy Alderson said in his interview when he signed James McCann that James McCann was willing to sign early and they didn't want to wait for JT Ruimuto because of the price. And at the end of the day, he only got $115 million. So Sandy Alderson didn't even want to go into any type of bidding war when the Phillies didn't even, they even said it. They did not think they were going after JT Romoto. They weren't going to re-sign him. So the Mets had a chance to offer JT Romoto a solid respectable, fair contract, which exactly probably what the Phillies gave them, maybe a little more, a couple of million dollars more, and they probably would have got the best catcher in the game. And you could say James McCann can work out fine. Absolutely. I'm not here to throw crap on Sandy Alderson's free agency and the players that he acquired through free agency. But when you have a need and you can get the best catcher in baseball, you do that. Nothing's stopping him now. All the other years we talked about with the Wilpons, it was about the money. We never blamed Sandy Alderson because it was about the money. But do you think every time he goes to Steve Cohen, hey, Steve, can I get this extra $25 million to get Springer? No. Cohen said it. He lets Sandy Alderson deal with the baseball stuff. He just is the financial person in this whole aspect and whole group when it comes to the Mets. So Sandy Olson had a number for Springer and says, I'm not going over that. I'm not going into a bidding war. But it was clear that George Springer wanted to become a Met 
And if they would have went the extra 25 million, and I'm going to get to that whole aspect with Springer in a second, go to extra 25 million to get Springer, but did not do that. But when it comes to Trevor Bauer, who let's be honest, he obviously was the best pitcher on the market considering who's, who's the free agencies left in the free agent pool for the start and pitching. So Bauer was clearly the best guy on the market, but wasn't worth the $40 million that he was paid. And career stats, if you want to look at that, Bauer hasn't been that good. He was a four ERA type of pitcher, just had a, a really great shortened season and he won the Cy Young. But Sandy Alderson put all the chips on the table for Trevor Bauer when Yes, we could have used Trevor Bauer, but let's be honest. The Mets are looking for probably a three or four type starter at this moment. Not maybe even a four or five. If we, it's not like we needed an ace or we needed a number two behind Jacob Degrom. We have Carrasco. My problem is is that when Sandy Olson has something in his mind and he's focused on that player, which was clearly Trevor Bauer. He was more focused on Trevor Bauer, who the Mets technically did not really need, but wasn't 100% focused on George Springer and JT Romuto. He signed James McCann because James McCann wanted to sign early. Now, James McCann can be a solid catcher defensively. We know he's very good defensively. Offensively, nobody knows. Now, you can go after the last year and a half and say, James McCann figured it out offensively. Great. But they went that route because he was willing to sign early and the Mets did not want to wait for JT Realmuto or go into a bid in war. But if you let's be honest, the James McCann signing, they went into a sort of a bid in war when it came to the Angels and James McCann. So when you think about that, you're like, okay, fine. James McCann, I can I can accept that because what we did. Now remember, this was obviously before the Lindor trade. The Mets technically didn't do much yet, and then the Springer happened with Toronto, and you're like, wow, the Mets Springer wanted to come to the Mets. Another twenty five million probably would have got it done if he matched the offer from Toronto. Springer would have been a Met. Is that simple? We everybody. All indications were San, Sandy Olderson, George Springer, mutual interest, but at a certain point when it came to Sandy Olderson. But Springer wanted to become a Met. All sources said that. And it just seemed that way. You can't fault Springer for taking the extra $25 because that's what all the players do. And then we go into the pitching aspect when it comes to Sandy Olderson. What happens? He goes all out for Trevor Bauer. Pit paying would have paid him forty million dollars as a mediocre pitcher. Now I'm not going to be the one to complain for the Mets to spend money on Trevor Bauer. It would have been a welcoming addition, in my opinion. Not that I said we 100% needed him because I think we could have actually dealt with and get a pitcher like a James Paxson, Jake Odorizzi, Tywan Walker, which is still possible, even though Jake pa James Paxson is out of the picture now because he went to Seattle. But he went all out on Trevor Bauer. That wasn't the biggest need for the Mets this offseason. We talk about the Mets spent. The Mets did not spend big. They haven't. They got Lindor in a trade. Lindor is still not signed. There's no extension. So let's calm down about the whole money being spent type of issue. Now, granted, if the Wilpons were owning this team, the, the Lindor trade probably would have never happened. But it still might have. We would have just figured the Mets were not going to re-sign Lindor after that trade. It's typical Wilpons. But again, there's no guarantee that Lindor is going to sign the extension. The Mets will probably give him an offer, but that doesn't mean he's going to sign it. So it was a great trade if Lindor signs and re-signs and extends with the Mets. There's a lot of other things that have to go into paying these players. And the Mets 
have not spent money. They paid Trevor May. They paid James McCann. What was that? For for one year, it was about between 15 and $20 million for them. Yes, they got Alvin Nomura Jr. They upgraded in the bullpen. They, I would say they upgraded catcher from what we had in the past. But if James McCann doesn't work out offensively, he is another defensive guy, which is, is something that this team needed defense-wise because I think the Mets offense is good enough. But we need Pete, so Pete Alonso to bounce back. Can he do that? We need Dominic Smith to play every day. We need big years from players that we expect. At the moment, J.D. Davis is the third baseman. Can he be good defensively? There's a lot of issues where the Mets could have solved them fairly quickly when it came to Springer and J.T. Riomuto. They were the two best players on the market. The Mets needed those necessities. It was a needed aspect of this team. Now, there is no denying that if you put J JT Rumuto and Springer, it's better what the Mets have currently. And that's including McCann, that's including Alvin Morrow Jr., including Nimmo. And you could say, well, there's no DH. If you put Nimmo to left field and Springer was in the center, what would you do with Dom Smith? No matter what happens, you see it every year when it comes to baseball and the season. When the Yankees got DJ LeMayu, everybody said, where is he going to play? There's nowhere to play him with DD at short. Torres at second. Uh, Andujar at third. There wasn't much that the Yankees could have used JT Ramuto for. He would have been a bench player. And look what happened. DJ LeMayu became one of the best hitters on the Yankees team. And he, and he found that starting role. Can be an injury. Maybe somebody's in a bad slump. They're not playing, performing well. Smith can play first base when a tough right hand is on the mound. The problem is Sandy Alderson always chooses plan B. And when he decides to go big in free agency, he chooses Trevor Bauer over everybody else. Why? Because Sandy Alderson, when it comes to free agency, has a terrible track record. And that's the biggest problem I have with Sandy Alderson. The Sandy Alderson problem is he loves plan B. No matter how much money the owner has, Sandy Alderson still believes that if you put a cap on a player, no matter if it's a big necessity on his team, the Mets are better off. Why? I don't believe that one bit. Are they better off with James and McCann? We'll find out. But you cannot deny the fact that JT Ruimuto is a lot better than James McCann. And you could say, well, JT Ruimuto is injured. He's, he can be injured prone. He had that hip issue. He's over 30. Okay. But if there's no production out of James McCann and he's still good defensively, you could have slot in JT Ruimuto and know he would have been a good offensive player. And Good defensively. Same thing with Springer. We we always talk about Brandon Nimmo. People love Brandon Nimmo. I like Brandon Nimmo. Brandon Nimmo is not a center fielder. We got to get that through our heads. We fall in love with our players. And we see the, the defense problems that Nimmo has. Going back on balls, tracking balls. Not very good coming in is why Nimmo plays shallow than most center, most other center fielders because he has to he knows he can come in on the ball better than he can go back on the ball and that's the problem. If Nimmo co goes to left field, he becomes a better defensive player. If Springer stays in center, if Springer was signed by the Mets and he goes to center field, you got a center fielder for at least the minimum of three years, even though you would have had to give him a six-year contract, maybe four years. And you have that production offensively. Imagine this lineup with Springer and Rio Muto. Dangerous. And getting Lindor. Dangerous. Sandy Alderson, when it comes to trades, I think he's one of the best. He knows what he's doing when it comes to trades. Free agency, I think he has. He worries too much about a bid and more, in quotes, 
and has a cap on every player, no matter the necessity of what the Mets need. That's my take on the Sandy Alderson problem. I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget, guys, if you enjoyed this video, smash on that like button. And if you enjoy all my content, you want to see more, you want to get them notifications when I post my videos and when I go live, hit that subscribe button, everybody. I want to thank you guys for watching. And as always, let's go Mets.